everybody. Welcome back to Jeffco Builds. Today's episode is a little more sentimental. We're looking at my 1968 Ford Bronco. So I bought this truck back in 2010 and I bought it for a mere $5,000, believe it or not. Um, granted, it didn't look anything like this, and I'll add a picture of that in now. When I brought it home, it had different tire sizes on each corner. It had weird axle combinations, a worn out motor, a three on the tree, um, lots of things that weren't necessarily desirable to me but I did know that it was the right truck, it was the right body, and it was in relatively good condition considering the cost and its age. Now I know what you're thinking. A 1968 Ford Bronco, those are $50,000 all day long. And do I have 50,000 in it? Yeah, I do, but it didn't start that way. I started with purchasing the truck at 5,000. Then as the years passed, I was able to pick up different parts build different components and make it really into what I wanted. And really it all started with axles, tires, suspension, geometry with the suspension. I've got weeks in planning just how the suspension travels on graph paper before I touch a single thing, not using a computer either, just longhand math. And uh, this is the product that you can come up with if you choose to take on a project that might run five to seven years to get it done, but in the end, you've got that $50,000 truck that nobody else has that you've always drooled over your whole life. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, well, I don't have five or seven years to build a truck. And you know what? I didn't either. But once you get it, you start building it, you start creating something with your own hands, you fall in love with it quite frankly, and then the years doesn't necessarily matter. You'll keep working on it, you'll keep tinkering with it, you'll buy parts for it here and there, and uh, eventually it just kind of becomes a piece of your family, a piece of your heritage, and uh, at that point the time doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if it takes you two years to build a truck, it doesn't matter if it takes you 20 years to build a truck. What matters is the time that you're spending building that truck, and that's why I wanted to make this video I wanted to encourage others out there that you can do this. You can build anything you want. And uh, a few years back, this was my priority. This was my project and uh, I got it done. And now my priority and my project is my Overland One truck, which I'm hopeful to start enjoying with my family this summer. But uh, you can do this and I'm just trying to show you how I did it. So without further ado, who's ready for a tour? So the truck's rolling on 39.5, 16.5, 16.5 Pitbull Rockers. These tires, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but uh, they are mounted onto a Hummer wheel. So this is a standard H1 Hummer wheel that I cut the center ring out of. I bought an insert that you can drop in from the back side to make it an eight lug and uh, went ahead and did that. And then I added these rock rings and granted they've got some road rash, but I use the truck, I rock crawl it. So it's not perfect. The bumper I built from scratch with some quarter inch plate and some tube and a JD squared tubing bender. And the worn winch I actually picked up used. It's a 9,000 pound worn and I bought it from an old man whose house I was working on. I saw it laying around and I asked him if it was for sale and he ended up selling it to me for I think it was 150 bucks. So don't got a lot of, of money up front here but um, you know custom made little bumper that gives me lots of clearance for um, tires, the rocks that come into the tires and uh, a nice little winch that was pretty cheap. Up front, we've got a Dana 44 front axle. And I know a lot of you guys are already laughing because I said Dana 44. Well, yeah, it's not a 60, but it does have RCV 
chrome molly shafts in it that actually so far have performed very well and I haven't broke a shaft since I put the RCVs in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the 44 for now. I've thought about upgrading it to a 60, but when I was building the truck, I was a little bit younger um, and I had it and I used it. So that's why it's got a 44. No other reason than it was convenient at the time. So Dana 44, it's got a three link uh, pan hard, three link suspension up front with 18 inch king coil over shocks. The front end also has an ARB air locker. Now under the hood, I'm running a 363 dart block, which is a splayed four bolt main. I'm running AFR Renegade heads that are all aluminum and EFI uh, by fast. And this here, is essentially a little front cage that I built over the motor. First off, it, it would help if I was ever in a rollover accident to save my engine. And second, it actually supports my shock towers here. So when you're really going through the bumps and everything, the shock towers don't deflect too much. So that's the engine. Now, as we come along the side here, I'm running the Bronco Roadster inserts from, I believe it's Wild Horses. And then down here, I've got some rock sliders that I built, again, just out of inch and five eighths tubing that are actually attached to the frame as well. As to the body. So they actually tie directly into the cage mounts, giving more rigidity to the roll cage, more strength to the roll cage in the event of a rollover accident as well as more strength to the slider when you put weight on it here. In the back, I'm running 14 inch King coilovers with remote reservoirs mounted to a custom shock hoop that I built for the Bronco. I've also got a Curry anti-rock sway bar. And this back here, this is a fuel tank skid plate that I built for my fuel cell. Now all the way in the back, I built this spare tire carrier that looks like it belongs on the back of a Ninja Turtle. And what you do with this is you simply pop this pin and this pin and then lower this down to the ground and roll the tire out. So this is a one person operation to be able to lift and lower the spare tire. If you're doing some really serious rock crawling and can't sacrifice the departure angle here, you can remove the whole thing as well and just four wheel without the tire carrier at all. Now onto the interior of the truck. The steering column and wheel are actually out of a 1967 Ford truck that was a manual transmission. And then I've got a four speed 435. And then over here, this right here is a Dana 20, a Bronco Dana 20 transfer case that I did the two high, four high conversion on. So that way you can run it in two wheel drive low range. And then I also have an underdrive that's called the black box eye that bolts onto the back of the Dana 20 transfer case, which gives you an underdrive function. My gauges are all auto meter and the dash of course is custom made that I built and incorporated into the roll bar. The roll bar is also custom and it includes some pretty cool speaker boxes that house my six inch speakers. And I purchased some gussets from WFO Concepts here and uh, I just thought they looked cool. So I went ahead and used those. My seats are made by Corbo and they're just a nice low back seat that I felt matched the vintage of the truck well. All right guys, that's it. So that was my 68 Ford Bronco. I sure hope you liked it. If you did, please feel free to like this post, comment, subscribe, um, you know, interact a little bit and that would really help out my channel. And on another note, I really encourage you all to go out and get started on building something for yourselves. Whether it's a shed in the backyard, a truck, a car, a go-kart for your kids, it doesn't matter. 
it's fun to build stuff. It's fun to do things yourself and figure it out. And I hope that this was inspirational to at least one viewer out there. If it was inspirational to you, um, then I did my job with this video because that's kind of what I was going for. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, my name's Jeff Coe, and this was my build. Mm -hmm.